package, Mr. Weston. Come on. Devin Weston. Yeah, I remember you. Invest wisely. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. We're not done here yet. I got a job for you, bro. I want you. I want you. I don't give a fuck what you want, pencil neck. I guess I just got you figured wrong, man. Hey, what's the figure? Tell me something. You like football? I got a stake in a sports investment venture. You like the market? I got some funds you can manage. Name your poison, man. Hello and welcome. This is a short video giving you a quick insight into how to trade the market in real life. A uh, quick hat tip to everybody on green energy investors. Right, here we can see the trading screen in the Grand Theft Auto game. It tries to mimic real life stock trading, but in actual fact if you followed what you, your instincts to buy low and then sell high, you're going to lose money in real life. You could just buy a very low price stock at four dollars and just wait for it to go up to a maximum of four hundred and sell but uh, if you buy low in real life the company could end up going bust or you'll be diluted and that generally just what happen is what happens so you can't follow that strategy in real life so in this video I'm going to show you a method how the, I, what I believe the original top traders like Jesse Livermore, James Keane, Bernard Baruch and, and many others, how they traded the market profitably. Take a minute to clear your mind because you're going to only learn and put into practice if you clear your mind of all ideas and preconceptions about the market because you need to listen to what I've got to say here and re-listen over and over until you understand. Most people look at a chart or a price chart, see where it's been and they buy low thinking they can pick the bottom when you can't predict a bottom and you can't pick a bottom and you just end up holding on to a stock that loses value over time and then you just take one big loss and then you're out of the game they do all the research they post on the bulletin boards every day looking at the price of the stock every five seconds they call up the public relations of the company and and they believe what they say and they put more money in they average down and and then one day they take a massive loss or the company goes bankrupt and that's the end of that. Well, you need to have a trade plan and a rigorous system that you're going to follow. And this is a very basic system which is out there and all the, all the famous traders, I think they use this system. Basically, instead of buying low and selling high, you want to buy at the high, at an all-time high, ideally. On this chart we can see how this is put in practice. So here we have a two year chart and I use two year charts for everything I trade in. And um, for example here we've got a chart that's trading between 50 and 100, whatever it, that can be euros, dollars, pence, pounds, anything. It's All that matters is the numbers. So over a two year chart for me this looks like an all-time high in this two-year chart it's been trading between 50 and 100 for the last two years and recently it's broken out of that 100 level that uh, we'll call it a potential pivotal point which is basically a major round number it doesn't have to be between 100 and a 50 50 would be the low two-year low and 100 would be the two-year high level it could be any number, it could be between 80 and 20 or 800 and 1000 or 3 and 9 it doesn't matter, it could be gold, silver, bitcoins, google any energy companies, anything all that matters is the numbers 
just remember that. It's quite unnatural to buy at the high. When it goes high, a lot of people in the past two years want to sell. When it makes a new high, everyone's in profit and everyone wants to sell. That is when you want to buy because you are a contrarian. This is a strange thought because at the high, you think, oh, let's sell at the high and buy at the low. Well, that's what everyone else does. Everyone buys at the low, but they can't catch the low. Everyone gets into a loss if it goes lower and then they sell and then it... And the cycle continues and that's how a stock trends lower and lower and lower. When it makes a high, something has changed at the company or the commodity or stock. And uh, that is when you want to be in, you want to be long. People buy low thinking they've got a bargain. Well, there's a reason why it's low and it'll probably be lower until something changes in the company or the fundamentals. We don't want to second guess. We haven't got time to dig into all the details and they, we never get to know all the details anyway until it's too late, of course. People treat uh, stock buying like hunting for bargains at shops. So if it's 50% off, they've got a bargain, then you buy it and you, and you feel good. Well, it doesn't work like that with stocks. If you imagine the stock market as uh, betting on a football match, if it was a top flight team playing uh, Manchester United against, let's say, my own local club, Southampton Football Club, um, you would bet on Manchester United. You'd be crazy to bet on Southampton. You could wager a small amount of money uh, hoping to get good odds and you'll, you might win, but you should only bet a small amount. It's all about probabilities. But with the stock market, people don't think like that. They bet on Southampton uh, with a lot of money, their whole capital on one big punt and it goes wrong and they and they lose thousands. And this happens all the time, sadly. So here we have the stock price going up above 100, a major potential pivotal point, and we buy there. We have a stop not far away beneath 100, so if we are wrong, we don't lose a lot. So we risk our risk is very small. We only sell when our stop is triggered. We buy when we see a new all-time high on a two-year chart, using ideally a daily close price or a weekly close price because they are more significant than a than a, than seeing a price during a trading day. We can't be at the computer all the time and it's less significant if a price flashes up to our buy area for a few minutes. It's more significant when it's a daily close which means the price closed for example at 105 which is above 100 at the end of the day. Even better if it's a weekly close so it's on a Friday which means a Friday close is more significant than a daily close. So now that the stock is in an uptrend from an all-time high on a two-year chart, we just follow the trade plan. So we've got our stop in place and we just got to wait for it to see if it can move up to a higher level and hold that level, which I'll show you on the next page. All we do now is just sit and wait and check the price once a day maybe when the market is closed. I don't even check it every day, I check it every three days or a week, at the weekend even. It's best to check prices at the weekend because you're not tempted by emotion to suddenly do something that you, and which breaks the trade plan. If our stop doesn't trigger, then we wait for the price action to move higher, past minor potential pivotal points, which are small, uh, smaller round numbers. Or even better, we look at major potential pivotal points. So let's say that stock passed 100 and we bought at, say, 103 or 104, which is a decent distance away from the major round number. We don't want to buy at 100, we just want to buy past it. And then if it goes to 110, say, we still watch and wait. It's past the mind of potential pivotal point when it gets to, say, 113. Once it's past 113, we can raise our stop to the next minor potential pivotal point, next minor number. So let's say we raise our stop to 108. So we would 
now wait for the stock to either go higher or wait for it to trigger the 108 level with a daily or weekly close. As time goes on, it might pass another minor round number, let's say 120. If it goes to say 123, it's definitely past that number, so we raise our stop again to 118. And we carry on this process. We can actually pyramid our position at each level that's crossed. And this is uh, pyramiding our position, and this is what uh, the best traders in the world did, or still do. One thing we want to look out for is at major round numbers. This is where people's uh, focus, and at the end of the day, stocks are controlled by people mostly, until computers completely take, take over. Um, after when a stock price crosses a major round number, if, it, if the momentum is right, it won't go back down and trigger your stop. So it really powers through those major numbers. Using this basic technique, um, I can show you this small portfolio that I created um, using small stocks and after three months we've got double digit gains which isn't bad <laughs> tips basically you want to show no emotion when you're trading don't fall in love with any instrument it's just a trade uh, with any trade I would assign a sister stock so let's say if you're looking at gold you want to look at silver too if both are making new all-time highs then you want to you know, that confirms the action of each other. Uh, if you're looking at a gas company, look at another gas company and just make sure what you're seeing isn't in isolation. Look at the overall market. So if the market's making all-time highs, then that's pretty that's pretty good probability you're going to do well if you're going to be long. The market can only be in three modes: neutral, in an uptrend, or in a downtrend. What does this mean? Well. Let's say your stock has made broken out into an all-time high. Well, that's in an uptrend. But it can be a false breakout and fall back down and trigger your stop. Well, that doesn't mean it's in a downtrend straight away. No, it just means it's in neutral. So you just wait for a new, another buy signal, which would be a new all-time high on top of that. So that would be a, a new buy signal, and you just repeat the process. So what's a downtrend? A downtrend, you can apply the reverse process by looking at an all-time low. So if you look at a two-year chart and it makes an all-time low, that would be a chance to looking at short selling. Right, next one, keep records. Just basically keep records um, everything you, of everything you do. And that is the only way you're going to be profitable is by being truthful to yourself and critically, critically analyzing and testing new ideas. If you want to test a new idea, record it and see if it works. Lastly, don't put all your eggs in one basket. This is what most of the public do. They fall in love with stock and they put every, all, the, all their investment in, in one or two stocks and they hope they go up and that doesn't work out and everyone who trades in the market long enough and I've been in looking at the market for over 10 years now uh, everyone goes through that phase and they learn from it and you know, they, some people probably never get out of the early learning phase punt one stock after another so um, like all professionals everyone has a continual professional development they always continue to learn and are willing to learn things that they don't know about and seek out the things that they don't know about. That is very important. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, so I can make money in the market. You need to have an objective. So, the objective I would probably think what most people will want to do is have enough money or income from trading so they can be their own person and um, do what they want with their time because time is one of the things that money can't buy but if you have enough money then you got enough time or something like that so you would want to 
have enough income from trading that it replaces all your expenses so you don't need to go out and work every day you can be your own boss you can trade anywhere in the world or from a computer that's the sort of idea so if you had a hundred thousand then you can make five percent return on that each year well that's five thousand per year income from trading assuming you can make five thousand uh, or five percent return each year so you want to build up enough capital so you can get to a comfortable level if you had a million then that's pr pretty comfortable I would say and you want to prepare for the bad times where perhaps you're going through something into your personal life and you can't trade anymore so you need to diversify has some income coming from hard assets let's say properties or, or businesses um, other things definitely they call it uh, financial freedom or uh, passive income income where you don't have to be at a certain place for a certain time doing things to get income you've only got one pair of hands and you can only do one job a day so the amount of money you can earn is fixed whereas you've got passive income you can geometrically uh, replicate it so it's unlimited almost if you think about it let's say you've got uh, a little business that gives you hundred pounds a month and you can re replicate that business ten times so you've got one thousand pounds coming in per month and so on and so forth so that's the that's the power of uh, passive income Uh, what is a reasonable return on trading? Well, on my, uh, I've discovered that to be consistent, you know, the top traders in the world make about 30% a year, and that's them working full time with a professional team behind them. So, uh, for a, a private investor or private trader, maybe double digits, 10% or more, is probably realistic and achievable. Uh, if you have access to 0% uh, bank loans then you can make money out of thin air <laughs> um, but in reality for someone who's a small trader they're not going to get access to cheap credit to speculate so it's good they're going to be using their savings I don't recommend using leveraged accounts or, or uh, betting accounts because you tend to find uh, the stops trigger where I prefer to use a daily close and uh, put the orders in manually and if the price falls past my stop I will put in the trade manually rather than use a stop because because I just tend to find um, betting shops and bucket shops let's call them uh, just trigger your stop for no reason and then so you might be thinking why is he giving this information away for free well I need more people basically to play the market uh, need a mania I mean the people in the past made lots of money up and down markets because more people played it and uh, time and the extent of moves is something I can't control so if more people played the market tomorrow um, then the chances for profits are much much bigger and much quicker and um, as they say, time's the most precious commodity. I haven't uh, released every all the information that I have in this video, so it's just a primer. And I know the system works for me. It may work for you, may not. So you need to have a look at it and see if it is right for you. Well, that's that. Hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.